Hello, everybody, and uh, thank you all very much for being here. It's um, always a pleasure to be back in this uh, magnificent uh, venue. Uh, we've had several events here over the years, and uh, it's definitely one of our favorite spots to be. Uh, thank you to Safety for Sea also for inviting Navarino to speak today. Um, and let's get down to it. Uh, my topic is digital transformation and how it can enhance and evolve the maritime world in the future. Shipping is a traditional long-term business. You have to plan 10, 15, 20 years ahead, very much like the satellite business. The latest generation of Fleet Express satellites that many of you use on your vessels, or Iridium Certus satellites that many of you will be using soon, were conceived and designed many years ago. The next generation of satellites, the ones that will take over from today's, in that 10, 15 years, are being designed and developed right now. Given that we work in these long-term industries, we, re we need to really use our imagination when we look so far ahead to consider what the future for our sector will look like. I would like to begin my look into the future with a look back into the past. 1981, the first space shuttle Columbia, blasting off from Florida to orbit the Earth 36 times over two days, six hours, and 20 minutes before returning safely to land on the 14th of April. Many of you may remember this launch. I myself was a very young boy at the time, but I still knew that this was a really special moment. A staggering demonstration of technological achievement, a wow moment. Fast forward to the present day. Sorry, I've lost my, my spot. Fast forward to the present day. <laughs> To another wow moment. This is a SpaceX rocket booster. These are attached to the side of a payload. For example, a bunch of shiny new Iridium satellites. And they blast that payload off into space. Once the payload reaches orbit, these boosters fly back to Earth and perform what is called a propulsive landing, totally autonomously. These boosters are even capable of landing at sea on what are called drone pads. Once the propulsive landing is complete, the drone pad brings the rocket back to shore again, all totally autonomously. In my lifetime, we've gone from blasting off into space to having our rockets returning to us all by themselves. Wow. When I first saw these, I was truly stunned. I was like, we can do this? You know, it was amazing. It seems to have come straight out of a science fiction movie. And yet it's real, a technological wow moment. We can today also find science fiction closer to home. This is a PlayStation virtual reality headset, which I recently brought home for the kids, of course. <laughs> I honestly was not expecting much. Uh, I thought that virtual reality remained in the chunky graphics, sort of gimmicky stage. I was wrong. This thing is mind-blowingly good. <laughs> in my, yeah, the kids' song. In my living room now, the kids <coughs> are taking virtual tours of London, running away from King Kong, shooting aliens on faraway pink planets, and riding in the cockpit with the red arrows, all in 360-degree video and surround sound. It is incredible. The kids cannot get me off it. <laughs> so... So while we're looking at the future, I suppose mine perhaps looks like this. <laughs> the reason why I'm showing you these technological wow moments is to highlight that we are living in an exponential world. By that, I mean that the pace of technological development is absolutely staggering, and it's accelerating rapidly. I believe all of today's presentations will be made available to you uh, after the conference, so you'll be able to have a, a closer look uh, at this really interesting graphic from Time magazine. <clears throat> In essence, it shows how fast computing power is developing, and we can see that by 2023, computing power will surpass a human being's brain power. By 2045, computing power will be equivalent to that of every human brain combined. Computers, of course, are getting faster, but they're also getting faster, faster. As a result, 
Each generation has more wow moments than the previous one. Who remembers the first time you held an iPhone? After years of playing Snake on a Nokia with buttons, to me, iPhone seemed to have come from alien technology. A touchscreen on my phone that really worked well. Wow. Wireless charging. Wow. Wireless headphones. Wow. Amazon Alexa's voice control. Wow. All of these things are just incredible, although we may have become a little blasé about them today. And what wow moments are on the horizon for our generation? Self-driving cars, space tourism, robotics. The rate of change is continuing to increase exponentially, giving us more and more wow moments every generation. Humanity will change more in the next 30 years than in the previous 300. As shipping is an industry with that traditionally long-term outlook of 10, 15 years, this rate of change will have a potentially enormous impact on our industry and how we work, just as technology has severely shaken up other traditional industries. Hotels have been flipped upside down by Airbnb, a company which has no physical assets for rent, rather it is a, simply, a simple huge online database of places to stay in, uploaded and created not by Airbnb, but by its users. Uber has shaken up the taxi market and looks set to continue doing so as technology advances. A Columbia University study found that with a fleet of just 9,000 autonomous cars, Uber could replace every taxi cab in New York City, and passengers would wait an average of 36 seconds for a ride that costs just 50 cents per mile. Amazon has just last week introduced its first delivery robot in Washington state, as it continues to disrupt the traditional shopping model and the high street store. But what can we expect in our maritime world? What's next for us? Drones look likely to be making an impact soon. Our customer, Maersk Tankers, recently successfully tested making deliveries to one of its vessels using a specialized drone that is approved for explosive environments. That basically means that if the drone crashes, it doesn't generate any sparks, which is a critical precaution in tankers, of course. Sending deliveries is not the only way drones could be used in our industry. They could carry out inspections of tanker cargo tanks, for example, without the need for the cleaning steps required for human entry. Another use could be for painting hulls in dry dock. The typical ship may have an underwater hull area of around 60,000 square feet. Rather than the four days it would take humans to paint, drones could get the job done in one day and without the need to put up and take down scaffolding. What else is coming? AI-based predictive positioning systems are already being trialed for shipping. This will enable computers to predict the future course and maneuvers of a vessel, giving a sort of virtual time travel mechanism to ship captains, who will be able to monitor the future positioning of a vessel in advance, which will improve situational awareness and decision making. 2019 will also be the year that autonomous vessels will really start being tested. Shipping regulators have, to, have already been looking at which rules need to be amended to enable widespread use of autonomous ships, and there are a number of trials planned this year for autonomous tugs and ferries. In the near future, I might be able to get an autonomous Uber from the centre of London to Waterloo Station. From there, a self-driving train might take me to Dover to put me on an autonomous ferry. Of course, thanks to Brexit, I may not have anywhere to go from there. <laughs> in shipping, as in many other industries where technology is bringing upheaval, connectivity is the new oxygen. Although given how addicted we all are to it, perhaps it's better to call it the new opium. The Internet of Things is changing the world rapidly, and of course shipping is not immune. At Navarino, we see firsthand among our customers the growing demand for tools to manage and to benefit from the hyper-connected world of big data. That's why over the years, Navarino has shifted from being a connectivity company to being a technology company. <coughs> our solutions are developed at the leading edge of the digital revolution to give you the possibility to embrace it fully. Over the years, I have met frequently with our customers to interview them about how they are using our services and technology. 
I can tell you that in just the last six months, these discussions have noticeably started to change. It's no longer, we have 20 vessels, which we've installed Antenna X upon, and Infinity. We offer crew internet, and we're really happy with the faster speed. Now it's, we have 20 vessels, and of course we're offering crew internet, but let me tell you about the software we're using for real-time engine performance monitoring, how we run three virtual servers on Infinity, the sensors that we use for temp uh, temperature control, and about the onboard CCTV that we can monitor from shore. More and more, faster and faster, digitalization is actually starting to deliver those smart ships that you have all heard about over the years at conferences just like this one. At Navarino, we work hard on developing advanced solutions and technology that help you to welcome digitalization, and we empower our customers to build advanced fleets that can sail confidently through the winds of change into a future maritime world full of wow moments. Thank you very much.